Lately on Mr. Sunshine Baby YouTube channel, we've been talking about the ongoing Palestinian protests that are calling for Trudeau's resignation because he's complicit with the genocide in Palestinians. We've been covering the Freedom Convoy or adjacent protests. Now it's shifted from Freedom Convoy to carbon tax protests. There's just a lot of protests happening. Now we're taking a look at something that I covered on my extra channel yesterday. I'm going to show you that video. I'm going to show you that channel because I'm hoping that you're going to want to subscribe to that because it's, it is different content. It's the same niche, but just extra content. Klaus Schwab allegedly, apparently has fallen ill. Now, for those who don't know, if you're watching this channel and you're the Klaus Schwab, who's that? He's the, the leader of the, the figurehead of the World Economic Forum. Now, what does that have to do with Canadian politics? kind of everything. The World Economic Forum has all these green agendas, right? Go carbon emission free, no more oil, all renewable energy. We're doing this to farmers. We're doing that to food. In Canada, attends these meetings along with a lot of other world leaders, right? America, France, Germany, so many countries around the world, uh, Australia, New Zealand, they're huge ones that attend uh, the World Economic Forum. So many of these other countries are influenced by this organization with the figurehead of Klaus Schwab and it's pissing people off. That's why you've seen a massive outburst of farmers protests that started in Europe that came to Canada. Chances are you've seen that or at least heard of that within the past few months. That's because they're protesting the World Economic Forum. And now that Klaus Schwab is allegedly ill, somebody is going to be taking his place. And there is speculation but are you ready for this? This is why we're talking about this on this channel. There is speculation and reason to believe that Christian Freeland, that's right, Canada's deputy finance minister, will be taking over as the figurehead of the World Economic Forum. Whew, that was one hell of an intro. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage everyone to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. We are a carbon tax away, just a silver away from heading 400,000 subscribers. It'd mean the world to me, and if you don't want to support me, do it because the government doesn't want you to. Smash that like button and turn those post notifications on so you can be notified of upcoming videos. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So this is a tweet yesterday that went absolutely viral. On X, rumors are circulating that Klaus Schwab has fallen violently ill. 5.5 million views, and then everybody uh, was talking about this as well. Probably got over 100 million plus views just on X just yesterday. And this is a video that I made on my Mr. Sunshine Extra. The link for this channel is down in the description. End of the World Economic Forum. Okay, that video itself got 33,000 views. And what we're going to be taking a look at today is a bit of a breadcrumb trail into possibly why Christian Freeland has been groomed to be part of the World Economic Forum in a much larger capacity, larger capacity than what she already is. So just as a recap, this is Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum. He introduced himself to be the Earth's trustee of the future. As trustees of the future, we are responsible for advancing a world which is richer in possibilities more equitable in opportunities and more secure in its foundations. Moreover, as leaders in government, business and society, we bear a particular responsibility to rebuild trust in how we assume our own role as trustees. All right, so at this point you might be thinking, all right, Klaus Schwab is evil. Christian Freeland is also evil. Klaus Schwab may or may not be dead or violent, fallen violently ill. So how does that lead Christian Freeland to be the figurehead of the World Economic Forum? Well, I'm going to tell you, and we're going to take a look at her history and involvement with the World Economic Forum. But the World Economic Forum is all about changing the world to be more self-sufficient, more renewable, energy friendly, and there could be massively a financial incentive and other hidden agendas as to why they are doing this because it's at the cost of other things, right? Lots of job losses, going backwards a little bit so we can potentially take steps forward. Also the fight on climate change. In Canada, out of every other country in the world is taking the lead. Not because anyone's forcing us to, but because Canada is so woke and become so radical that Canada, our tiny country, yes, vast land, but our tiny population of 41 million. Oh wait, hold on a second. 
This just in, 500,000 immigrants have just crossed the border today. 41.5 million people in Canada were taking control over fighting climate change for the entire world. And one of the people in charge of that is uh, Christian Freeland. Oh my God, she's one of the biggest hypocrites, right? She says she bicycles everywhere, even though she got caught going 140 kilometers an hour in a vehicle, gas-powered vehicle in Alberta last year. Got a speeding ticket. That was pretty funny. But let's just take a look at a couple more things about the WEF. So you've got never forgot, uh, never forget that Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, put limousines on private jets to fly around the world to tell you to reduce your carbon footprint. Put all these idiots in prison for the theft of our tax dollars. This is insane. And nobody has this level of hypocrisy more than Canada, especially Chrystia Freeland. The Honorable Chrystia Freeland is Canada's deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. This is right from the World Economic Forum's website. Ms. Freeland was first elected as Member of Parliament for Toronto Centre in July 2013. She was elected as Member of Parliament for University Rosedale in October 2015 and re-elected in October 2019 and September 2021. From 2015 to 17, Ms. Freeland served as Canada's Minister of International Trade, overseeing successful negotiations of Canada's free trade agreement with the European Union, CETA. From January 2017 to November 2019, she served as Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs. During this time, she was leading advocate for democracy, human rights, and multilateralism around the world. As foreign minister, she led and successfully concluded the renegotiation of the North American Free Trade Agreement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States. All while she was doing all of this, she has been... I, mean, I, I hate to say this, but essentially groomed or indoctrinated by the World Economic Forum, uh, along with many other liberals, even Justin Trudeau, which is why you have stickers like these on my microphone, which are linked down below in the description if you'd like to purchase your own. Klaus Schwab penetrating Justin Trudeau, and that's not a play on words. That's something that has actually been said by Klaus Schwab himself. Christian Freeland has been an activist. She's been, uh, for a lot of these climate activists, a lot of these woke liberals, she is almost Mother Teresa to these people. People bow down to Christian Freeland in Canada and also internationally around the world. She has spoken on lots of World Economic Forum panels. She's been very persistent with fighting climate change. She's also done a lot between uh, to support Ukraine because her background, her heritage is Ukrainian, even though it seems to allegedly be that her grandfather had ties to the Nazis. And it's just, it's just the list goes on and on. And we're going to take a look at a couple of the panels here now. So this is a WEF summit. Freeland Kearney warn of future supply shocks amid global instability. The Deputy Prime Minister taking the stage in Davos, discussing how Ottawa is looking to adjust the Canadian economy coming off the pandemic. After the shock that we all experienced during COVID with things shut down, our people are just going to demand a little more security in their supply chains. Christian Freeland was part of the panel on how economic recovery requires trade and investment during Thursday's session, the World Economic Forum Summit. She says while the pandemic had a major impact on the global economy, geopolitical issues like Russia's invasion of Ukraine have also increased pressures on inflation. A former Bank of Canada governor thinks there is a shift taking place, which is changing how global trade is being addressed. Our trade routes are being rewired through uh, de-risking of, of supply chains. That is a form of a supply shock. It will have some persistence. Obviously, energy systems are being rewired uh, with uh, addressing uh, climate change. Mark Carney is also the UN Special Envoy on Climate Action and Finance and says the push away from fossil fuels will play a factor through the rest of the decade. Oh yeah, that weird thing. And a lot of people also believe, I mean, Pierre Polyev has said that Mark Carney will be a runner-up <clears throat> for prime minister and will replace Justin Trudeau. So what, what a better time right now than to use the momentum of 
allegedly the fall of Klaus Schwab, taking Christian Freeland out of the Canadian spotlight, moving her to the World Economic Forum as a bigger figurehead instead of just a participant, and then bumping Mark Carney up to her position so that he could be runner-up for prime minister. This is all speculation, but, I mean, the, people are talking about this stuff, and it also is a bit of an opinion piece, so I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Um, I mean, Christian Freeland has been involved with the World Economic Forum for years and years and years. You get True North here that says, Christian Freeland to speak at the World Economic Forum in Davos. This is earlier this year. She's been attending these things for many years. But I've got a clip pulled up here, a CPAC clip of Freeland, um, a bit longer than what we just saw, actually attending the World Econo Economic Forum and speaking. Let's take a look here. We have a lot of clean energy. 85% of our grid is already clean, and we are investing heavily in building more clean energy. We are a country that believes in manufacturing, has manufacturing know-how and capacity. And then you guys spoke about industrial policy. You know, the thing that is new about industrial policy is we are developing our economies, growing our economies at a time when we also need to accomplish the green transition. And I spoke yesterday to a very significant international business leader who is also a big investor in Canada. And he said to me, all the countries in the world need to be very careful that decarbonization does not mean deindustrialization. I thought that was an extremely smart comment, and Canada is absolutely determined that decarbonization for us will mean more jobs, more growth, more manufacturing, and we recognize government needs to play a role to make that happen. So we've set up a $15 billion government fund run by professional investors from a Canadian pension fund. And I hope you know Canadian pension funds, they're geniuses, the best in the world. <laughs> I'm sorry to burst out laughing, but Canadian pension funds are at risk because these idiots that have spent all our money and we're in so much debt. Look, plain and simple, plain and simple. If there's one takeaway from this video right now or a summary of what the hell is happening in the world, there's a good versus an evil. There are monsters that are ruining economies to push their own agenda. Look, I'm a fan of solar power. I'm a fan of lithium batteries. I lived in a van for four years full time. I had my roof covered covered with solar panels. I brought in these thick cables into my van to a charge controller, through an inverter, two lithium ion batteries. And that's how I powered my fridge, my freezer to feed myself, my dogs. I had lights, I had a shower, I had a whole system, a whole operation, a studio apartment that would cost you $750,000 downtown Toronto or Vancouver. I took that and I put that on wheels. All right, and I did it pretty much all myself. I'm a huge fan of solar and renewable energy. Energy. But it's not. It's not the right time in the world to be pushing this down people's throats. It really isn't. Unaffordability is through the roof. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about fighting climate change and making the world greener energy, which is an inherently not the worst idea, but when it's forced down people's throats at a higher cost than what everything else offers right now, nobody's going to care because if you're having to decide between food or rent, nobody's gonna care what you're proposing if it's gonna cost them more money. So they keep saying these taglines, it's, it's gonna cost less money, it's providing more jobs, when in fact, the, you have people like the conservatives like Pierre Polyev and other conservatives or Republicans around the world that are saying that that's, that's just not true. Look, man, there's a lot of benefits to going solar and going green, and yeah, sure, we need to dispose of them. Okay, yeah, maybe that's an issue. Yeah, okay, cars light on fire that have lithium ion batteries. There's a lot of kinks to work out. I am a fan of solar, I'm a fan of renewable energy, but I do not want to have to pay for everything to be lithium ion batteries because the upfront cost of anything that's, that's renewable, anything that's lithium ion battery powered is so insanely expensive. When you have the option to buy a you know, $30,000 car, gas or diesel, versus $75,000 of electric or even a hybrid, and then you have these idiots right here that are, are gladly spending all of our money completely destroying any 
pension that Canada may have or what's left of it. And they have the audacity to tell you it's cheaper. It's cheaper when you're looking at the numbers going, it's not cheaper. And I feel stupid when you tell me it's cheaper and I can see with my own eyes that it's not cheaper, which by the way is what gaslighting is actually called. But let's continue to watch this expert gaslighter. So we don't have my department manage the money. Sorry, you guys are very good too. Um, and then the wishes are in fault. No, we do not bad We're either. Huh? No, but like, come on, the Canadian pension funds, they're great. Um, my point is, we're, we don't have government bureaucrats invest these $15 billion. We have professional investors do it. But their job is to fill that gap between what, to, to really to de-risk for private capital. And that $15 billion is being invested alongside private capital to make projects work. And then we have put in place a system of investment tax credits um, really to be comparable to the IRA. And we now have a suite of policies for the industrial transformation worth about $120 billion. So come invest in Canada. We believe that we have to hustle. Um, we think this is a moment that, you know, the cement is being poured for the new economy. And we really believe in being out there talking to investors in the world and saying there's a lot of natural advantages Canada has and we're going to help those advantages along with government policy. And then just to conclude, Borgay, what I'll say, I liked your introduction. I liked the way you said it's really important that trade policies work for people. And that would be sort of my final comment speaking for Canada. Um, but really, I think this applies to the whole world. Um, as we build our economic policies, whether they are trade policies or investment attraction policies or industrial policies, at the end of the day, the question we have to ask ourselves is, will this make the life of the people I represent better? Will it create great jobs that people can build a life on and have hope and optimism for the future with? The short answer is no. No, it will not. And that's exactly why Chris Schiff Freeland is going to be a perfect fit as a figurehead, a potential figurehead or more of a leadership position uh, with the World Economic Forum and shifting out of Canada. Canada's small potatoes on the global scale. Canada really is. I know you watch, you likely if you're watching this and you're this far in this video, right, you're probably a big consumer of Canadian news uh, and Canadian politics. So, I, I, I mean, my algorithm tells me that everyone in the world is watching and cares about Canadian politics. And that may or may not be factual, but that's just my algorithm bias. In, in terms of actual, you know, on the global scale, geopolitics, Canada is, is pretty small potatoes. And they're trying to make a massive name for themselves by being figure or by being uh, leaders in the fight against this, this climate change and that whole agenda. So if Canada is able to take one of our own, put them in the World Economic Forum, which then has influence over the rest of the world, well, that means that Canada would be better positioned for pushing their agenda with the World Economic Forum and have a little bit more of a bias. This is all just opinion, folks. This is all just speculation. But I, I do think that there is tangible reason to believe that this could happen. You have the Liberal cabinet that's absolutely tanking. People are jumping ship. People are jumping ship from the NDP. There's going to be a lot of changes that are happening, and this would shock. This would shock the system. And um, especially if they replace Christian Freeland with Mark Carney, who would be running up for PM. Trudeau takes a leave of absence to focus on family time or whatever it is. That's what I'm thinking. But of course, it's the end of the video, and I'd love to know what you guys think down below. Am I, am I off the rails? Am I going down a conspiratorial path here? Or do you think that what I'm saying has a little bit of validity and could pull its own weight? Please let me know down below in the comments. On your way out, I'd really like to encourage you guys to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.